Now that you've set your overhang properly in the first major step of the process using the Wally tractor, the next and final major step is to perfectly align the cantilever at the null points. Before you begin this process, I do want you to watch this entire video and the video following this one on tips and tricks and other notes and important things about this whole process. It's important to see it all done first before you start. There are two null points on any arc sweep of, the, of a pivoted arm across the playing surface area of the record. And if you have set your overhang properly, then when you align your cantilever at the first null point, it should also be perfectly aligned the second null point. We're going to confirm that, and then we're going to do a final step whereby we're going to look at the cantilever alignment at the points of maximum angular error clockwise and counterclockwise. Seeing your cantilever's alignment at the points of maximum angular error is particularly important for two reasons. First, it teaches you how to have your eye be sensitive for what one degree of angular error even looks like. And then secondly, if you can see what you're expecting to see at those two points of maximum angular error, then it's extra confirmation that you know you have nailed your alignment at the null points. The same preconditions for setting your overhang also apply to aligning your cantilever. First, the platter is immobilized. You've set your vertical tracking force. Anti-skate has been disabled. You've already determined using the Wally skater that the horizontal torque forces are under control and not going to be causing a problem. Same thing for static friction. And lastly, of course, maybe perhaps before all of this, you would have made sure that your arm board is level as possible. Actually, it's the arm board that's more important to be level than the platter. Let's get this started then. The first place we're going to start is at point number two. We would have already determined whether we are aligning with Lofgren or Bearwald, so I'm going to set the loop in front of alignment mark two, and I'm aligning with Lofgren today, so I'm going to be lowering the stylus right into the middle of the three triplet marks that correspond to the Lofgren alignment. So swing the arm over, lower it to the triplet marks, put it in the center triplet mark. Now that I've lowered my stylus into my targeted uh, triplet mark, I'm going to look around at the side, from the side of the cartridge, because I want to see that the stylus has fallen onto that radial line that extends from the edge of the Wally tractor to the center of the Wally tractor. It's important for that stylus to fall on that line. If it doesn't, just use your cueing arm to lift the stylus and then rotate the Wally tractor such that when you do lower the stylus back down, it'll fall onto that radial line. Double check again that the stylus is still on the middle of the triplet mark. The Wally tractor is intentionally made on a mirrored surface. The mirrored surface offers us a significant opportunity to eliminate parallax error. You have to ask the question, when you are assessing for parallelism between the alignment line at the null point and the cantilever, how do you know your eye is in the right position to make that assessment. Well, the mirrored surface makes that possible because these lasered etched marks have a reflection of themselves in the Wally tractor. And if you look closely from this perspective, you will see that depending on where your eye is, the etch mark and the reflection of the etch mark will not line up or line up with each other. So you want to put your eye just in the right position that they line up with each other. Once you've done that, once you've put your eye in that right position, now you can assess for the alignment of the cantilever at the null point. We can see at our first attempt to align the cantilever at point number two that we are in error a bit clockwise. So, easy solution with the arm up, bring it over to the armrest, and we're going to revolve the cantilever a little bit counterclockwise in order to make up for that error. Now, I would suggest that you do not loosen both of these screws. Keep one of them snug, not tight, but snug, and loosen another one, and 
just give it a little nudge, a little nudge, almost imperceptibly so. Now, if it won't go at all, then that means that the screw that you do have snug down is a little bit too snug, so you might back that up just a little bit, and then you can do a little revol revolving. Okay? Snug that down, and let's come back and see how we're doing. Put it right on the center of the triplet marks. Again, let's make sure that you're right on the radial line and check it out. Okay, we're good on that one now. Now that we've aligned at point number two, let's move to point number three area. And you'll have to revolve the Wally tractor, move your loop, drop down to the middle of the triplet marks. Make sure the radial line is right underneath the stylus. Put your eye in the right position to remove parallax error. And yeah, it looks, looks just like it did at point number two. We're looking good. We've now aligned the cantilever at the null point and we've confirmed it at the second null point. Now it's time to look at the cantilever alignment at the points of maximum angular error. That's points number four and five. Four being uh, clockwise in error and five being counterclockwise in error. Now it's important that at point number four, we're gonna expect to see a clockwise error, but it will be a very small amount. And I'm gonna give you a figure, but this figure does vary depending on the length of your arm most people will be around one degree. We're going to want to see about one degree of error. Well, what does that look like? Well, you don't have to know right now. This is going to teach you. What we, you, we should definitely see, however, at point number four, is that there is a slight amount of clockwise angular error versus what you've done already at the uh, null points. So, with the arm up on the armrest, we're going to move over point number four. Put the loop in the position, lower the stylus to the center of the triplet mark. Make sure that we're on the radial line. Again, do not twist the Wally tractor with the stylus on the Wally tractor. You must lift it up first. Okay, we are set. Now put your... Now eliminate parallax error by lining up the reflection with the etch mark. And there it is. We can see a very slight amount of clockwise angular error. All right. Now, this will mean more to you now when we see the angular error at point number five. At point number five, then, we should see counterclockwise angular error and in an amount quite a bit greater than what we see here at point number four. So let's do it. Again, we are going to lift up the arm and lower the stylus into the center of the triplet marks. Move the loop. Check that the stylus is on the radial line. Get your eye so that you're eliminating parallax error. And there it is. Now we can definitely see the counterclockwise error is in an amount quite a bit greater than what we saw at point number four. If at point number five you see a great deal of counterclockwise angular error, but you're not convinced that you've seen anything at point number four in terms of clockwise error, then chances are you can do a better job at the null point, right? So go back to point number two and realign. And probably in the case I just spelled out here, you will probably have to rotate the cartridge a bit clockwise from a bird's eye perspective. On the other hand, if the error that you see at point number four clockwise and the error you see at point number five counterclockwise look to be about equally matched, just in opposite directions, then you probably need to revolve that cartridge a bit counterclockwise at the null points. This very process then has trained you what one degree even looks like because that's what you'll see at point number four. And 
we now have confirmation that you have really nailed things at the null point because you won't see these two errors to the degree that we're showing you here unless you have aligned well at the null point. That's it for aligning the cantilever. There is another video after this that I do want you to watch. Very important points, tips and tricks and other situations that uh, you may find yourself in when uh, going through this process.